Hello everybody, this is Taka. In this video, what we're going to be doing is setting up our very own ad blocking server. We're going to be setting up Pi-hole with some good old recursive DNS, giving us an additional layer of security and privacy. So just a quick bit of clarification here. A DNS server is what we all use to quickly connect to various websites and domain names around the internet. You've probably seen these IP addresses from some of the largest DNS providers, such as Google and Cloudflare. The benefit to using one of their DNS servers is just overall speed. There are millions of people who are constantly adding data and queries to their cache on a daily basis. So basically, if you're looking for maybe techhut.tv, your connection will ask whomever your configured name server is for the IP address of that website. Now, Pi-hole here in general kind of act as a middleman. That has a pretty extensive default block list of IP addresses and domain names, and it will filter all of those out, giving us a ad-free browsing experience. Now, as far as name servers, there's definitely a con to using some of the larger DNS providers, and it's that those servers log both your general internet traffic and all of your internet history. And with those logs, theoretically, it could put your data at risk as these servers can get attacked and some of their logs and entries could be leaked. So later on in this video, we're going to be setting up Unbound, which will act as our very own self-hosted DNS server within Pi-hole. So in this case, if you tried to visit techhut.tv using Pi-hole and Unbound, it won't use other servers and it will seek out the authoritative name server for that specific domain. On first connection, this will take slightly longer, but the data will be cached in your instance of Pi-hole, so it will be quicker in the future. So getting started here, this is a current Pi-hole instance I set up just to do a quick test. We're going to be doing this in Proxmox. Now you can do this on whatever you want. We're going to be doing this on Ubuntu server. So if you have a uh, Raspberry Pi laying around, that works. Maybe you have a uh, Raspberry Pi alternative because you can't find any in stock. Or even an x86 system like this uh, Zimba board here, you can install this on just about anything. But what I'm going to do real quick is do this as a container within Proxmox. So just create a new container and run through this process. So this is going to be my Pi-hole instance. I'm going to give her a password here. Next template, I'm going to pick Ubuntu server right there. You do have to go download these if you are following this specifically. So I'll leave uh, some extra information down below. Next, 8 gigs should be fine. Let's go next. One core is going to be fine. Next. 512. All of the defaults seem to be good except for right here. I want to uh, enable DHCP. Let's go next and next and finish. And it's really as easy as that to go ahead and set up a little uh, Ubuntu container within Proxmox. You see it's already ready to go. Right here is our new one. It's going to finish creating. We see Pi-hole. So let's go ahead and give it that a start. Now, if you're doing this with Ubuntu server, going forward, after you have Ubuntu server installed, these are your steps. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in here. Now, one thing you really shouldn't do really anything as root. So to switch that up, you could just type in a uh, add user and the uh, username you want. So I'm gonna go with Brandon, give yourself a password. You can skip all this stuff unless if this is like a big server with a lot of users. Yes, and there we go. And do make sure you remember to add the user that you just created, which for me, it's gonna be Brandon into the pseudo group. So enter, there we go. So now I can switch users to the user I just created. And now we could go ahead and update our system. So we're gonna want to do sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade. And I'm just gonna select Y automatically, type in your password. And there we go. Now a default install of Ubuntu server will have a curl installed, but with these containers, they're super lightweight, so they're missing a lot of packages. So I'm going to need to go ahead and install curl because what we're going to be doing is running a curl command to install Pi-hole. But before we do that, I do want to give a big thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Linode. I actually have a video up on the Linode channel where I go through most of the processes of this. But in addition to that, we set up our very own VPN server using Pi-hole on Linode. This is the video right here. We actually are able to use a WireGuard connection to connect to Linode as a VPN provider. Super fun video, and it is fairly easy to set up. On top of that, Linode is just an awesome platform for hosting your websites, 
web services, whatever it may need to be. I personally host my WordPress instance on Linode for techhut.tv, and I've hosted plenty of other things such as Nextcloud, game servers such as Minecraft and Valheim, and much more. You have full backend access, it's easy to spin up a wide variety of distributions, or you could use a huge amount of their one-click installers. It just takes it a couple extra steps to spin it up as a VPN for a good secure connection. So with that, let's go back into our installation here, and to get this up and running, there's there's actually a nice little curl command here that you go ahead and paste in directly from pihole.net and what this will do is launch a installer for us. It's going to go ahead and run some system checks. You can see our OS is supported and here we go. This installer will transform your device into a network wide ad blocker. Beautiful. Pihole is free, powered by donations, and you do want to make sure that this is on a static IP with this container. I believe that this is going to be on port or the uh, IP address ending in 71. And in most cases, if it's just plugged in directly to your router or whatever, you, you should be good to go. So let's continue there. And for now, I'm gonna go ahead and just leave this on Google. But like I said, later on, we are gonna be setting this up to uh, act as our very own DNS server. So I'm gonna continue. And then right here, Stephen Black's list is gonna be perfect. That's what I just generally use the default. It's a good list. And do we want to install the admin interface? Of course we do. Uh, PHP modules, yes. Uh, would we like to enable query logging? Now this is up to you. If you don't want this even stored on your own server, you could go ahead and disable that. For me, I'm gonna say yes. And if you do say yes, there's gonna be some additional options if you want to hide domains, domains and clients, but still keep the logs you can. For me, showing everything is going to work perfectly fine. And then it's gonna go ahead and begin and finish up the installation process. It is incredibly quick and easy to get this initially set up and running. When it is done, it's gonna give us a little temporary password as well as our IP address to connect to but we're gonna go ahead and change the IP address or change the password with a command here. You can see there we are indeed ending in 71, so get this, whatever this is, how you're gonna be connecting to it. It is HTTP to start, and you can see our password is there. Now, I'm not gonna remember that. We're gonna quickly change that, and we could do that with a pihole command. It's just pihole-a-p to change the password and you can put in whatever you want. This is gonna be a temporary instance for me, so I could put something like, sub to tech hut as the password something that isn't very secure but something you definitely should do in addition to ringing that bell so you do not miss future videos hit enter new password set so now we could go ahead and test and make sure that this connection is working go ahead and give this a quick copy or open link a new tab even easier and here we go you can see our instance is up and running if we go ahead and click login we could type in the good old phrase sub to tech hut login and now we have full administrator access and now theoretically if you don't want to set up a uh, recursive dns server and you just want this solely for the ad blocking you don't care if google or cloudflare or whatever can see your uh, traffic and all that you you can just use this set this up on your router or go ahead and just connect to the ip address as your dns server locally on a device by device basis and you're good to go but what we're going to be doing here is following this guide this is the unbound pihole installation guide they'll have a lot of the information that i talked about in this video but explained much better than i could do so i do recommend you read through this so you get a better idea of exactly what is going on but everything you're really going to need to do this is right here so first things first we're going to want to actually install unbound so we're going to jump back over to our terminal proxmox instance whatever you happen to be using paste that on in sudo apt install unbound let's go ahead and hit enter and confirm that installation now at first here it is going to fail to start up and that's because it doesn't really have a configuration yet we're going to need to set that up so let's go ahead and head down here under the section that says configure unbound it gives you a quick list of what is going on the main thing that we're going to do is switch the port of unbound to 5335 so it doesn't interfere with the port that a pie hole is running on so right here is where we're going to want to create this configuration file you can use whatever text editor you prefer personally i am a good fan of a uh, nano so we're going to go sudo nano and then paste that on in obviously getting rid of the uh pasting errors here there you go etsy unbound unbound config pie hole config so hit enter this is a new file and then all we need to do is simply copy and paste this entire text box right here. Give that a copy. Go back to Proxmox and paste that on in. 
So you can give this a quick skim if you'd like to, and they have a lot of really good notes, so you can see specifically what all of these various settings do. And we can see here the interface is going to be 127001, and that is going to be important to remember in just a sec when we uh, set this up within Pi-hole. So Control O, output that to save, and then I'm going to exit on out of there. So now what we can do is go over here and restart the service, and that's just with a service unbound restart command. So let's go ahead and drop that on in there. Boom. And then, of course, testing to see if it's operational with this dig command here. And there we go. We can see it on the port. Everything is looking good to go. And what we're going to do real quick is go over to Pi-hole and set that up in our settings. So if we go over to settings, we can go over to DNS. And if we go over here, we could get confirmation of what we're doing. We're going to disable Google and then add our own here with the port 5335. So... Just disable the Google DNS, add a custom one, and input the 127.0.0.1 that we saw earlier. Do a hashtag and then 5335. And now all we need to do really is go down to the very bottom and save that. So now when we connect to Pi-hole, this should act as both our DNS server and an ad blocker. So just to test this out, I'm going to be doing this on a device by device basis. And to do this, you could go into your system settings and whether if you're on Windows, Mac, Linux, whatever, it's basically the same process. Go over here, search for DNS under network. And I'm not using internet, so I'm actually going to need to go under Wi-Fi and do this. Go to my Wi-Fi settings. And then here under IPv4, I can set a custom DNS. Now, if you're going to go through uh, Mac OS, it's basically the same process. If you search DNS in your settings, it'll take you to the right place. And same thing with Windows. So here under DNS, I'm going to uncheck automatic and I'm going to put in the IP address that goes to my uh, Pi server. So that is 192.168.0.71. And then if I apply that, close this out and let's load up a website. An absolutely piece of garbage website that I'm aware of is one like CNN.com. And then I can tell here that there's already ads that aren't coming up. So if I go back to Pi Hole, you can see we already have a 185 queries blocked on CNN. If we go down here to the query log, we can kind of see what's going on. This is our client. This is everything that's been blocked. And if we go ahead and scroll down, find something that's actually okay, that's one of them. If we go another page, we'll see a few more. And you can see that that was answered by localhost 5335, meaning that is the DNS server, which is ours, that went ahead and answered that request for us. And now let's say, for example, I went ahead and let, let's refresh this or maybe even go to another page. So let's go to this page here, scroll down a little bit, let some content load, and then head back over here to our query log. And now at this point, we can see that it says, okay, cached. So next time it goes and tries to load whatever that domain name is right there, the location or the IP address for the website is in our cache, so it will be uh, much quicker than that initial query. So I think we're all good. We are set up, and sometimes websites do that thing where it says disable your ad blocker to continue. If you ever need to temporarily disable this, you just quickly go to your uh, dashboard right here. Right here under disable, we could select that. And you could disable it for 30 seconds, 10 seconds, whatever you need. Just a little tip in there if you've never used Pi-hole before. And doing it how I did it with the actual settings on the device is a really good way to start. I might make a video in the future going over how to get this all properly set up on your router so it actually is network-wide. But for now, the video is getting a little bit long and I'm going to end it here. Uh, with all that, again, subscribe, sub to Tekka, <laughs> as per the password, which I will be deleting this and changing to something much more secure. Uh, with all that, have a absolutely beautiful day, and goodbye.